Format. Before you start drawing your comic, you have to realize what kind of comic you're making. What format is it going to take? There are two standard types that I usually recommend to anyone who's starting a comic. The first is the standard version, which is the A4, A5 paper size comic page. It's usually the best for printing and for a tight page flow, which means uh, your art, your text, everything has to work very good together to make the most out of the page. You have to cram a lot of stuff into all of these panels, but not over panel it and make it unreadable. So it's kind of a more advanced version of it. But if you just want to make a comic and try stuff out, I would recommend Webtoon, which is a more vertical sense of a comic. It's usually best for the web or your phone, and it has a much more loose page flow where you can stack your panels on top of each other, have space in between to make it flow a little bit more easily. You don't have to cram everything together. But in the end, it's always up to you what type of format you choose. Uh, sometimes you can take stuff from your webtoon and redesign it to make it into a A4 you know, standard comic page for print. So the choice is up to you. Thumbnails. Before you start drawing the full page and getting all into it, you should make some small mini versions of the pages called thumbnails. These are for testing the page flow to see if the text works, if you know the panels are big enough, small enough, does it have to be so many panels? And if something doesn't work, maybe there's a post that doesn't fit into the panel or maybe you have to do it in a different panel. So it's easy to test if it works and if it flows, if you can feel that you can understand what's going on without, you know, all the details and all the colors and everything like that. So before starting a full page, uh, the final page, I would definitely recommend to do thumbnails because then you also know if you don't know how many pages you're going to create. If you do the thumbnails, you will get a very quick answer to how many pages your story will take up. A beginning and an end. You're always going to need a beginning and an end to your story. Even if that end doesn't come for a long time, you're always going to need to know the end of your story. Because if you have the start, like perhaps a student who wants to learn about magic. Then you're gonna know what is gonna happen at the end. Well, maybe the end is he became the Wizard King. Everybody loves him and all hails him. How he got there is the journey. That is something that you can fill in or, you know, have different adventures. That's the journey from start to finish. That's the filling of the pie, so to speak. But you have to know where the story is going so that your character makes an arc. And it doesn't have to be, you know, this big epic thing. It can be a guy going out to buy milk. And then all these crazy things happen and in the end he gets the milk but a lot has happened. Mayhem, chaos, maybe he fall in love or something. So. A beginning and an end is always good to know, even if you don't know how they get there. But know the ending of your story. Establishing Shot Every comic has a first panel. Every scene has a first panel, which is called the establishing shot. This is to tell the audience where the characters are. In what kind of environment are they? Are they in trouble? Are they, you know, doing something? Is this they, their usual habitat, Or is there something going on that is unusual for them? The establishing shot is to help the audience, you know, tell the, char tell the characters where they are or perhaps where they're standing in relationship to the other character. Maybe they're across the room from each other, maybe they're sitting close to each other, or something like that. The establishing shot is used 
to tell us is it a fantasy is it modern time uh, are we in a new environment that we haven't seen before in the story so the establishing shot can you know come back later on in the comic over and over and over again uh, manga usually does this by having a great first shot you know telling us where we are and all of that and then the background kind of you know becomes more simple because we already know where the characters are we know where they're standing and later on when we're changing a scene yes a new establishing shot to make us you know realize okay the characters are standing here they're doing this and then the background fades out again so establishing shots are great for telling where we are where the characters are and all other information that can be needed for the audience. Don't over design. Usually people draw their characters with a lot of details, patterns and shadows and you know cross hatching and stuff like that and they forget that in comics you're gonna have to draw this character like at least 30 times more if not thousand of times more from different angles and all that detail over and over and over again. So it's always best to try and keep a simple design that keeps you satisfied but is also easy and fun to draw over and over and over again. Really strip down to what is necessary. Can you do something uh, simple and then perhaps make you know simple shadows that make it look more advanced than it really is. The trick is usually to have a, a simple design that can be drawn over and over again and when you get into that flow you can easily draw it over and over again and it doesn't make you feel sick or tired of the character because it has too much details and too much stuff to draw.